Oh, hey, what's up, you guys? How's it going? It's Papa, and today I wanted to showcase you guys probably what's going to be my last live twin sprite list of the current format. And I know we just began a format, so I just wanted to go ahead and showcase you guys uh, one last time uh, what this deck looks like. Basically, the list that I played for my regional that happened uh, yesterday as of recording. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't do amazing. Uh, mainly because of the lack of testing and uh, like the lack of knowledge that I had for the matchups. But I basically wanted to play a deck that I felt I could utilize Thrust with, and uh, I came upon this deck. And mainly because uh, your deck should be probably playing three Thrust in the deck in uh, the format right now, just because it's probably the most powerful card this format, minus Prosperity, of course. But I wanted to showcase you guys my list anyway, even though I didn't do too hot with it. I mean, the deck was really good. Don't get me wrong. It was just me that didn't really play it to the best extinct. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and showcase you the list. I mean, it's kind of similar to what I had previously posted, but I'll just go straight into it. Starting off with the main deck, uh, three Sprite Blue, of course, uh, three Sprite Jet, uh, Sprite Red, one Carrot, uh, Double Starter, Smasher, and Gamma Burst. Uh, these cards have not changed. Uh, this is still like the perfect Sprite lineup, I think. I mean, granted, if we had Elf, I would consider playing a Pixies, but we don't, so it is what it is. But uh, this lineup was fine. I didn't have any issues with it. I mean, if anything, there was the instance where I drew too many Sprite cards, which uh, didn't really do too well for me, but I mean, it is what it is at the end of the day. So uh, just the main lineup, no more, no less. Uh, for the lifetime component, uh, I was still on three Lola, uh, three, uh, three Kiss to Kill still, uh, one Frost, and one Sunny Snitch for the... Uh, monster lineup mainly because again i still wanted to respect roll which i did get hit by during the regional which kind of sucked uh so i wanted to uh minimize the use of this and then just maximize the use of the actual good cards that help you get your engine going uh so i just felt like having the eight names was basically fine so that's that uh this is where the deck gets a little bit like different from like previous lists that i had uh basically i wanted to maximize uh going second strategy so this deck was entirely blind second i wanted to make sure i had something ready for any matchup that i played against and i did but again just poor execution on my part so that's on me uh, i main deck two gamma seals mainly just to deal with uh like the ddd caesar uh mainly for like lady labyrinth uh Mirror Jade, whatever it may be, uh, stuff that could have basically just helped me win the game. So Gamma Seal did a really good job at doing that for me. Uh, I played uh, two copies of Evenly Match, uh, also just a very strong card. Uh, but when you're playing Thrust, you don't really need three of it, especially if you're just blinding second. So I uh, just opted for two. The only hand trap I played was two infinite and permanents. I felt like I didn't want to play any other hand traps, mainly because again, since you are going second, you're going to be starting off with one more card. But that one card could actually generate uh, something that could help break the opponent's board that you may have. And I want, didn't want to have my opponent go fully uninterrupted, so I just opted to play two impermanence because uh, even if you draw it off of the Live Twins effects or the Evil Twin effects, then it does kind of suck because you can't really uh, use it when you draw it during your opponent's turn, so it is what it is. But I just opted for two impermanence. It was fine. I didn't really miss the third. And then I played three Prosperity for extra consistency. I feel like you have to play some deck that plays Prosperity in this format, because otherwise you're just going to have a bad time, not be able to hold up with the amount of consistency that every other deck has. So I just mainly used those. Uh, three copies of Droplet. This is probably the best card in the deck. Uh, being able to send a live twin to summon another live twin back is very good. And then uh, this card also just helps clear boards when you pair it with cards like Evenly Match, uh, when you pair it with like... Um, I can't think of the card at the moment, but uh, when I get to this other spells, I'll show you. Uh, but yeah, three droplet was just really insane, so I definitely wouldn't play the deck without three droplet. It was really good. Uh, two Book of Eclipse in the main deck. This got changed at like the last second, like basically the night before. I wanted to have something that could just help uh, deal with other boards too, just to mainly help utilize my evenly match. So by Book of Eclipsing like a full board of cards and then resolving evenly was just uh, very strong in my opinion, which did happen. So I opted to just do that because these two cards plus any live twin will just be full combo so very nice uh three thrust i mean this card's broken you need to play three thrust this format i'm sorry so definitely wanted to max out on those uh one talent to pair with uh, the three thrust uh one change of heart one feather duster and one herald of the abyss uh, all these cards are just so strong and you can send them off of your droplet two to help resolve so i mean the cards were all good I uh, definitely think that this was a very good 
uh, way to attack the format, especially when you're not too certain about how to play against most of the decks right now. So uh, I didn't want to play any hand traps that were like monster wise in the main deck, mainly because of cards like Thrust, cards like Talent, uh, just being able to hand rip you when you definitely need the cards in your opening hand anyway to help you uh, combat the board going a second. So I didn't want to give my opponent any chance to have those cards live, and plus when they were passing on extra cards in hand, I would like to think that those were uh, extra copies of these, so, and it worked. I mean, definitely wanted to just make sure that this was like the main focus of the deck, and it worked out perfectly. I mean, not perfectly, because I didn't get my invite, but I mean, it worked out perfectly in the way that I had wanted the deck to be built. Uh, that's it for the main deck. It is 41 cards, uh, no more, no less. I wanted to stick the deck to 40, but by doing so, um, I, since I put in the two Book of Eclipse at the last second, it put me at uh, 41, but I felt like it was fine. I mean, three Prosperity just helps the deck go wild. For the extra deck, it's just a little bit different uh, from what you're used to seeing, so I'll just get into it. Uh, two Gigantic, of course, it's the best Xyz in the game. Uh, Onibimaru, uh, one Zeus. Uh, this is probably just like, the most like standard way you've ever seen me build a sprite list. I mean, Onibumaru was uh, actually not in the deck originally. What it was uh, was a uh, access code talker when I was building the deck again, but uh, I opted to cut it. I just didn't see the need to play the access code because I was never really making it in this version because I was mainly focusing on the uh, evil twin aspect of it. And basically I would banish this card off of prosperity like 90% of the time anyway, so I never really used it. Uh, Zeus is always just a good board breaker. Uh, for the evil twins, I played three Kiss-A-Kill, three Lilla, and I played two Trouble Sunny. So basically how I wanted to maximize my prosperity usage was I wanted to make sure I was banishing six off of prosperity every single time that I played. And by being able to do that, I was able to cut like extra copies of the, um, of the Lilla and the Kiss-A-Kill uh, and then like one Trouble Sunny to make it in my normal uh, lineup. But those were just three cards like off the bat and then like it would be like Onibimaru, um, I'll show you the rest of it actually, Muckracker, Phoenix, and Unicorn to run off the extra deck. Uh, I would banish the Unicorn or the Phoenix for going first. Um, basically Muckracker is just another copy of any of these so this would probably get banished and then probably a Gigantic depending on the matchup but uh, there was definitely uh, a lot of thought behind this uh, to make it to where I could utilize Prosperity to the best. Uh, so that way I could dig six deep every time instead of three deep, and it was good. I mean, I definitely think, like, when you do build a deck like this, then you kind of run out of options for, like, what else you would want to play in the extra deck. So uh, maxing out on these was, like, kind of kind of interesting, not going to lie, but I definitely think it was a decent call to try and do. But that's it for the extra deck. Uh, nothing too crazy. I mean, it's basically standard other than like the duplicates but again this got banished off of prosperity most of the time anyway to just maximize uh full usage so it is what it is and then rounding off the uh side deck i played one resonator uh three copies of draw and lockbird uh for like manadium uh pirelli uh whatever it may be but card is really good uh three ash for branded uh mainly because i wanted to have something to take out like uh taking out like uh what's it called the uh the gamma seals and like the evenly match going first like you could just throw in three ash and uh some other cards that i played uh like two druid swarm this was mainly for unchained but i figured there was going to be a lot of tier limit a lot of branded so i wanted to make sure i had something to combat those matchups as well uh paired up with a double lightning storm a double dimensional barrier and two anti-spell uh, I feel like the extra, uh, the side deck was fine. I didn't really see any issues with any of these cards. These cards were all really good. Um, the only one that I didn't really use was Lightning Storm because I just couldn't get there because my lab opponent played Lord of the Heavenly Prison, so it was what it was. But it is what it is. I mean, the side deck was fine. Uh, these were definitely a good choice to put in the side deck because I never missed them in the opening games, so it is what it is. But that's going to go ahead and do it for the deck profile, guys. I, again, this is probably going to be the last version of Lifetime Sprite that I post for the current format, mainly because I want to try and venture out. I want to try and play uh, something different. Like, <clears throat> I know you guys are probably sick of seeing me play Sprite every single day of your life, so it is what it is. And... Uh, 
I don't know. I just don't really know what else to really play right now. So, I mean, we're going to venture out. We're going to see how the YCS concludes this weekend in Dortmund. And we're going to see, like, basically what the meta is shaping out to be. And we'll basically go from there. But the deck was really fun. I mean, it was definitely, like, a nice uh, way of thinking about the current format. But we'll see where we land after this. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Until next time, this has been Papa. And I will definitely catch you all in the next video.